so my name is Sweet Pea. I am a DJ, I'm a producer and a uh, radio presenter of 10 years probably in the scene. This year is my 20th year DJing. Um, I'm the social media person for EQ50 and also a mentor for our critical and our RAM mentees. So I designed and deal with the website, uh, the Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, fuck TikTok. Uh, <laughs> um, I moderate the Facebook group, which we'll get onto in a minute. Um, and I also deal with the SoundCloud and run the uh, EQ50 mix series. Um, so we'll get to we'll get to the SoundCloud. Um, obviously, we're a crew that is for better, fairer representation in drum and bass. We started off obviously more energy directed towards more women on lineups, um, but obviously diversity as a whole is a lot different. We now look at obviously color on lineups and also accessibility. Um, you know how accessible is your venue? you know, for somebody in a wheelchair, maybe there are people with special needs that might want to come as well. So it's, it's the whole sort of thing together. Um, our SoundCloud, we follow just women and non-binary people. Um, I like to think of EQ50 as like an information outlet. So a lot of people are like, uh, you know, trying to find someone for a guest mix, trying to find uh, producers or something like that. So if you go on our SoundCloud, it's literally anything to do with women and non-binary people. So my sole purpose for SoundCloud is to just like and repost anything to do with them. So it could be a track, could be a vocalist featured on a track, could be a radio show, could be a guest mix, whatever it is, we're using our platform to promote and and share the, the great work from, from the women uh, and non-binary people. Um, also, alongside that, we run an EQ50 mix series. So if you're a label or a crew, I would highly recommend running a mix series alongside whatever you're doing. Everyone loves a mix, do you know what I mean? Everyone loves a mix. It also gives newer artists a platform to showcase you know, their skills and their talents. Um, some things to think about when when possibly doing this is to come up with a nice quirky name. You know, people like things that are funny, not too serious. Ours is a bit boring. It's just literally EQ50 Mix Series 001, 002, etc. Um, but for example, Dynamics, perfect one, have got the Dynamics. You know what I mean? Simple, very effective. Sofa Sound have got the Mixing Bowl and it's a picture of a salad mixing bowl. Do you know what I mean? It's silly, it's fun, but you, you know exactly what you're getting with it. It's the association. Um, some other things to think about as well is um, your the design of your um, you know your artwork, your logos, things like that. People these days people are extremely visual. You know what I mean? If we think if you think about your phone, you don't need any words because you know exactly what picture is where, and that's how you click it. It's the you know. Um, you can look at somebody's artwork and you know exactly what it is. Even if you're not looking for it, you can see it subconsciously, it goes in. So a lot of people have the same artwork, maybe a different color, go through the Dulux, you know, the Dulux color wheel, basically. Um, some other things to think about is having a variety, having a variety of subgenres and music. You know, the drum and bass spectrum is absolutely massive. Obviously, if you're called something like, if we were called EQ50 Jungle, we're gonna be giving out jungle mixes, right? But if you're a mix series, you know, showcase absolutely everything. Um, put it in perspective, you know, if I was to give you four months, I'm thinking of like, you know, Shogun, Critical, you know, Monroe, QZB, Rollers, that, you know, real rolling drum and bass, it's quite popular at the moment. If I give you four months of that, you know what's gonna come on the fifth month and you're probably less likely to listen because you've just had four months of it. Um, so give, you know, to keep people engaged with your brand and stuff, give them a variety. Um, I don't like to look at numbers, but we'll just bring numbers into it for a second. Our mix series, bar Mandy Dextrous, who just delivered a smashing mix and also has 20k followers so mandy's mix was going to do good anyway our most listened to mix was from the untouchables now the untouchables is like minimal halftime tribal samurai music dub militant stuff it's sick mix wicked wicked mix um and second to that was an artist called mia who gave us a kind of old school headsy um 
sort of breaks, half-time, choppy, ruptury type mix as well. So to the norm, you know, to most people, you wouldn't think that's the most popular or where the biggest fan base is, but actually those mix mixes did great. Variety is the spice of life, right? Um, so something else to think about if you're a crew, if you're a label, um, also as much as you're giving people a platform to showcase their stuff. One of my favorite mixes was an artist called Mix L. She did a mix for us and you could just hear her passion, her energy, just wicked tunes blended so nicely together. And it's probably one of my favorites of the whole, you know, of the whole mix series. But you've also got to build, you know, your brand and your crew. So every five months, every couple months, go get yourself a big artist. You know what I mean? If, if you think about it, a big artist is gonna share it on their platform. People are gonna see it. They're gonna make the association with your artwork. They're gonna peep your stuff. This whole sort of sharing is caring thing is real. Do you know what I mean? Um, they'll have a look. They'll share it on their on their their website, their socials, their platforms, and then you're going to get a whole load of other fans, or at least people clicking, people clicking, and people looking. Um, the great thing about the drum and bass scene is that it is kind of small and it is a family vibe. So if you don't know directly, you know, a bigger artist, you probably know somebody that does or someone that knows someone, right? Call in some favors, send a message on, you know, everybody is right here at the moment, you know what I mean? Send a message asking what's the worst someone's gonna say, oh, actually I'm a bit busy at the moment or I can't commit to this right now. So, you know, ask, ask, you don't know what's gonna happen. Um, so as an artist, I would highly recommend that you get a regular mix going as an output, have a regular mix coming out. Um, if you can, join a radio station or something. Like four or five years ago, being a radio presenter, host, whatever, was not cool. <laughs> um, but you know, with a lot of, a lot more platforms pushing younger, you know, younger artists, there is this whole big scene about being a radio presenter now, which is lovely to see. People like talking, people like interviews, the whole kind of podcast thing as well. Um, you know, uh, stations like Represent and Foundation FM really push this. Um, things like Goat Shed and SWU, you know what I mean? There's 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 uh, platforms for you, for you to do this. A lot of... Um, a lot of radio stations are also, also in. Uh, sorry, are also internet based. Maybe if you're not so comfortable doing uh, radio or speaking, just put out a mix. Put out a monthly mix, a bi-monthly mix. People like consistency. Do you know what I mean? As as a punter, people like consist uh, consistency. People like to know that right at the beginning of every month, EQ50 is going to release. A mix uh, every every two weeks on every Tuesday, Sweet Peas Radio Show comes out. Do you know what I mean? It's that consistency um, and things like that. And again, think of a nice quirky name, something that rolls nicely. Um, I helped our EQ50 mentee Spectral with her. She's got Spectral Selects 001. Do you know what I mean? A nice play off the S. Keep it engaging and keep it nice. Um, so with that in mind, I think it's really important to keep your SoundCloud's neat and tidy. You know what I mean? People don't, again, going back to the, everybody's quite visual these days, attention spans are a lot shorter. You literally have about three seconds before somebody's gonna click off. Um, people don't wanna be scrolling through, trying to find your track, scroll, you know, scrolling through, trying to find the mix. They want it there on a plate, nice and easy, one click away. So keep it all, you know, the SoundCloud feature has the spotlight, which is great. And obviously you can make playlists. So mine, for example, is my bass drive shows, all my promo mixes, my releases, and then free downloads. It's just there, it's all, it's all neat and tidy. Nobody wants to go scrolling, basically. Um, bit, bit, bit. Okay, so that's SoundCloud. Is there any questions about SoundCloud or just like socials that side yet? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> too old for it. <laughs> no, do you know what? Like TikTok it is again. Like if said, it, like if said um, earlier, you know, there's always going to be new platforms. The I do believe if you know, it's the the sheer amount of people on there is probably a good one to have. I'm not going to lie, but it's 
yeah, when you admin all of the socials, I just can't be bothered to do another one. <laughs> yeah, week, yeah, exactly. There's always going to be new stuff. Like I see videos of even just friends and stuff that have it and it's like millions of people have viewed it. So it is, again, as a way of getting yourself out there, there's a huge little, a huge little um, drum and bass niche. I've seen some of the videos and stuff and it is, there is a space for it. I just can't be bothered to admin another page. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I mean, as, as much as you can handle without the drain of social media, because at the end of the day, you've got to look after it, do you know what I mean? Without the drain of social media being too much, yeah, have as many as possible. But yeah, I just can't be bothered to do another. Yeah, yeah. Sort of like back in the day, I remember, were well, you saying eclectic mixes and kind of getting mm. out being a bit diverse? Mm. I'm just finding nowadays it's getting more sub genres. Sort yeah. Of people are very scared if there's something else. Mm. I'm very. I'm used to like DJ Yoda and all them. Yeah. Guys, sort of multi genre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mix. No, definitely not. No, definitely not. I think so. I think just with the progression of drum and bass, anyway, you know, over the years, you know, back in the day, talking the nineties, it was DJ led. You know what I mean? It was all about the DJs, what the DJs were playing, and then as the two thousands came, the twenty tens, it's just become very producer led. You know what I mean? And with that, it's it's been like a, a rise of the labels. It wasn't all about who was releasing on what label, it was about what DJ was playing my tune. So it's been a kind of progressional thing. Um, so yeah, the scene has kind of cut into segments a little bit more, um, but again, creating their own kind of communities and subgenres as a big mass within the whole within the whole sort of organ, you know, organism of drum and bass, if you like. But I was having a conversation the other day and you know, like you said, being a multi-genre DJ wasn't a thing before and actually was almost quite shunned upon because it was like, no, you play garage, that's all you play or you just play drum and bass. Um, but what's been really refreshing and really nice to see is the younger lot coming through play everything, you know, with the resurgence of jungle and 160 footwork stuff. Do you know what I mean? You've now got people that play sets starting at 120, going through all the way to 170, and it's it's, it's a wicked set. Do you know what I mean? And and why not? You know, you shouldn't. If you want to play techno or house, why does it have to be labelled as an alternative set or you know sweet pea techno set? Do you know what I mean? Chuck it in there. Why not? Again, variety is the spice of life. We've just become so rigid. You know what I mean? And again, that's I think maybe that's what. The drum, what's maybe kept the drum and bass scene from not progressing, but just kept it a little bit. It's just a little bit stagnant. It's a bit stuck. Yeah, just a bit. It just needs to be a little bit more flexible, I think. Um, but yeah, multi-genre DJ is definitely a thing, and I'm yeah, I'm 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 here to see more of it. Mm. Um, okay, so our Facebook group. Um, our Facebook group is women and non-binary people only. Um, it's important that marginalised people have a safe space to speak and, um, you know, bring things up and just be around people that experience the same things together. Um, worked quite hard right at the beginning setting it up because I didn't want it to just become an just another group. Do you know what I mean? Just another music group. Um, I wanted there to be discussion. Um, so we've got a mix a mix and live stream spam rule that it's not, it won't be allowed in the group just because I know I've left other groups for, you know, just seeing reams and reams of live streams or just mixes. If I want to listen to a mix, I'll go and find one. Do you know what I mean? I wanted it to be a place of discussion where people are open to speak about stuff. Um, there's some great people in there that post, you know, jobs, um, jobs in music, we ask for people to send their tracks in for feedback. If there's events, there's loads of blogs, you know, and just, again, just trying to get that discussion going rather than it sort of just becoming saturated with self-promotion to an extent, which I think is important, but again, yeah, just not, I've left groups because I've just seen bedrooms and just live streams and things like that. And it's, while it's, you know, I understand and it's, it is cute. It's, yeah, I, you know, I didn't want to be just another group. Um, so similar to that as well, Black Junglist Alliance have, um, they had their own group. Um, and it was open sort of to everybody that they considered an ally and things like that. For my own personal reasons, I left that group because again, talking about 
marginalized people needing their own space, you know, this includes queer people as well, needing a space um, to speak openly about things. I feel that me being, I, I was very grateful to be included in that group, um, but I didn't feel that I needed to be there, you know. At, at the time when everything was kicking off a little bit in drum and bass, I feel like black people needed to speak amongst themselves for that, do you know what I mean? So for that reason, I took myself out the, out the group. Um, so within our group, we do ask that people, you know, don't share stuff outside. The, it's a safe space as much as the people inside it make it safe. Obviously, we can't police that. I know people have shared stuff outside of it. I've had passive aggressive statuses directed me, at me the day after we've spoken about something in there. It's fine, you know, it is what it is, but we do ask that people sort of have that sensitivity um, and things like that. There's a lot of women that will challenge things in other groups um, and then just get absolutely hounded, basically. That's that's it, because it's obviously people that don't quite understand where they're coming from, maybe don't quite agree with it. Um, whereas if they were to post the same thing in the group, whilst everyone does have a difference of a group, you know, it's usually everybody's reading and they're on the same page. So they agree that maybe a lineup is too male heavy, um, you know, minus all the abuse, basically. Um, women have really opened up in the group and found that other women have experienced similar things and stuff like that as well. So again, it's that collective, everyone's there on the same sort of wavelength. So yeah, so that is our socials and EQ50. Okay, mentorship, let me just have another sip. Um, okay, so when EQ50 started off, um, we were just basically had the idea to start off by doing things like this, you know, workshop days. Um, the need was for, you know, tune feedback and sort of, you know, learning how to set up a label. Again, if we, sorry, from a women's p p uh, point of view and perspective, we need, it's lovely seeing more female producers, sorry, more producers and DJs that are women. Um, but also, you know, we need women promoting, we need women running labels, we need women behind the scenes as well. So we just started off just doing workshops. That's how we were gonna sort of roll, do them semi-regularly, create a little collective, create a little network where, you know, all sorts of people can come and things like that. Um, not too long after we realized that mentoring or a mentorship scheme of some sort needed to be put in place, but we also knew that it was gonna be a ridiculous amount of work. It, you know, it had never been done in drum and bass before. Um, it needed a lot of thought and it needed to be done right. Do you know what I mean? I'm sure everybody can, knows on social media, there is gonna be someone there that's gonna argue the sky is green and the grass is blue. Or as soon as you, you know, of all of this stuff here that you do right and opportunities and all the rest of it, one fuck up and you're done on social media. Do you know what I mean? Um, so it was important and because it's such a, you know, it is quite a touchy subject or at least when we were setting it up, it quite a lot more people are open to it now it was a touchy yeah. subject so it just needed to be done right basically and you know start as you mean to go on kind of thing as well um so what we did we hooked up with um some big labels in drum and bass and offered um a year-long mentor mentorship scheme once i kind of feel like the energy and attitude towards us sort of calmed down a little bit and people understood what we were about once the mentorship happened. Once we had Andy C and Brian G and Friction saying, oh, actually, yeah, no, this is a great thing. I'm all for it, giving us support, sharing our stuff, saying they're happy working with us. It kind of changed the attitude at the very beginning. A lot of people just sort of thought we were just a bunch of women moaning, blah, blah, blah. You know, all your bog standard comments that still get sort of thrown out today. But I think the difference is, okay, yes, we are, we're not moaning, we're bringing up an important subject, but the second step is what you're doing, what are you doing about it? And the mentorship is the what we're doing about it. People realized we were serious. People, you know, understood that we were here making real change. Um, it's been lovely seeing the ripple effects, you know, it's been nice to see other labels, so hospitals started theirs, um, Overview also started their own little mentorship scheme. It's been lovely seeing the ripple effect that EQ50's had um, and just general support and I feel attitudes are changing when it comes to 
inclusion, you know, inclusion and diversity. It's not just all about, you know, getting more women on lineups. It's a whole umbrella. Um, so it's been nice to see that sort of sort of change. Um, so we, so what we offer is, so we did have a list of how it kind of started. It's, it's, it's veered away a little bit, but this is, you know, this is what it's like when, when you start up something new. Um, but what we do is we do a month on and a month off. There's a production one-to-one -one with the label artists. So we've had Monroe, we've had Galaxy, um, who else? QZB, Halogenics. Um, yeah, Noit Tice from Noisia. He did a masterclass. Um, so we have the the label um, label artists do a one to one with our mentees, and then every other month is we have a whole group. You might see some of the pictures. We have a whole group um, uh, masterclass, and that's where we had ties. We had Quartz deliver one about sampling. Um, we're gonna have the. ESP masterclass talking about sort of agencies and you know pricing that kind of thing um, and I believe Amy Jane who's an absolute queen of the scene Amy Jane's going to come and do one about sort of approaching labels and demos and things like that um, so it's a bit of a whole you know a whole package that's what we offer um, the the our artists get you know regular A and R they've got a really good relationship with the with the label owners and the label heads. Um, and also they get a mentor, which is one of the EQ50 crew, who's obviously available. We've got a big WhatsApp group, which, you know, we speak in quite a lot. And we as mentors are available to them for just the little things. I think that's one of the one of the most important things about why I love EQ50 so much is because I really could have done with just a bit of a big sister to say, you know, you're playing two hours. Why is he only giving you 50 quid? Or, you know, why you don't need to be playing, you know, playing free sets and things like that. If, you know, I feel like if I had had that when I was a bit younger, which is why I want to, you know, give my knowledge and support to support to those. Um, OK, so what exactly does mentoring look like? Um, you know, I've given you an example of what we offer, but more than anything, mentoring is just offering your time. Um, every artist that is in the scene, big, new, older, has come in through being mentored. It's, you know, again, we go back to this networking idea. It's about who you speak to, who you know, who do you know, and which community are you building? You know, do you know someone that knows someone at a label? Can they give your demo to them? Do you know what I mean? It's that is mentoring in itself. Um, it's about answering messages. I love, you know, I get a lot of messages of various things, you know, a lot of labels coming up to, you know, coming up to us asking about what they can do to help uh, help their label or maybe they're looking for a certain type of person. How do they do that? There's still a bit of a stigma around sort of how to become inclusive without looking tokenistic, um, which I understand is a, is a difficult, um, you know, a difficult bit of a difficult area, but there are, you know, there are ways to do it. So messages are always there to be, you know, answered. Um, little things like listening to music as well, um, sending your music to DJs, artists. Um, it's, you know, it's that feedback, a bit of criticism, you know, what could you do to make it better? Um, that is mentoring in its sort of smallest form. And with, I guess, with EQ50, from that perspective as well, it was about all of us together. So it's the core members are myself, DJ Mantra, DJ Flight, uh, and Chickaboo. We also work with Jenna G and um, Ali Cat as well. And it's about collectively, you know, collectively we know a lot of people in the scene and it's about using those contact, contacts to help the newer lot coming through, basically. Um, also, as well, just a bit of a side note, um, you know, our EQ50 and our, our team, we are essentially a crew that is pushing for diversity um, and inclusion. And it's important that the people, the core members that are running it are also diverse as well. You know, it would be, it'd just be a little bit weird if we were talking about representation of black people in, in music, if we were all, you know, white. You know what I mean? It just doesn't it just doesn't make sense and it doesn't work. So it's important that we do have a diverse, um, you know, a diverse team. 
I mean, had it be said, we don't have any men in our core in our core group, but we do all the label owners are guys, you know, all the um, all the men that we deal with on a day to day basis. Um, everybody in the labels, most of the uh, producers have been men, so we do deal with men and we get them involved as well. Um, and also a little extra extra side note um so looking at labels as well i think it's important to have women we need you know we need women in higher spaces and actually just from a personal perspective um the labels within the mentorship that have kind of you know every, all the labels have been different and they've all been absolutely amazing um but the ones with women in the team so that was ram and that was shogun have kind of just completely picked picked it up and run with it you know what i mean just and again it's because it's that it's that common common boundary it's that you know women knowing what up and coming women in the scene would need do you know what i mean so it's important that if you're a label if you're a crew you know make your management diverse as well because it then reflects on your crowd it reflects on your audience vice versa are there any other questions yet? No. Okay. Cool. I've got a question. What, what, yes. Um, like obviously, this mentoring thing is amazing. I think it's awesome. Um, yeah. Like, big up for doing all of that. Yeah. Um, obviously, I always share something for us chats, but you know, <laughs> it's been a lot easier for us. So I get that. Yeah. Um, like, what's what what's, what what are you guys actually going to do next? Because I'm seeing a lot of female mm. DJs on lineups now. Yeah. Um, obviously, now festivals have opened up. I've seen mm. DJs I've never heard of before. Yeah. yeah. Suddenly playing massive stages. Mm. Um, you know, I'd love to be in those shoes. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's awesome to see, but like mm. I think um, it was mentioned in the talk earlier on about the faster someone rises, the quicker they can drop off. So yeah. Like, what are you guys like planning to? You, you're doing this mental thing. You mentioned it's a year. Yeah. And like a lot of these. Um, guys are like jumping on the stage and they're playing wicked events but they haven't got any tunes yeah and i do kind of see that from whether it does, doesn't matter on your sex gender color whatever yeah um but like very few people ever come through as just djs so like what's, yeah what's next like what are you guys going to do to support those people to keep them up yeah yeah i think it could be quite a dangerous place for people's mental health that suddenly they're elevated mm. and then they're kind of just yeah, yeah. Like yeah, yeah. So the mentorship was uh, produced for was for producers. Um, so and it was so the whole mentorship was about giving these producers the tools. And again, it was sort of individualized plans, um, giving these producers the tools they need to make their music better. Um, our mentorship wasn't a promise a promise of releases. Actually, if releases happened, that was an extra. You know what I mean? And there's quite a few of our artists that aren't getting releases and that's okay. Um, and those that have got releases through their labels, that's a, you know, that's a great, you know, an absolutely brilliant thing to happen. But it, yeah, it was never promised in the beginning and it's not like a, <clears throat> you know, we're not just sort of finding any woman to then go, right, here you go, label, you know, these are really, really talented women that make sick tunes. Do you know what I mean? Like Athena, anyone knows about Athena released on, on Shogun? mad good producer and like it's her first few releases does stuff with gold fat as well um we were actually quite blown away by the sort of you know maybe even a little bit yeah i guess yeah fully taken back by the the quality of of producers i think a little bit of naivety for us in the beginning is we thought that we would get you know 30 applicants and there'd be a handful of maybe half decent loops like these are full tracks like full tracks really well mixed down like there's some mad mad talent out there and actually we probably you know the fact that ram couldn't decide they took two do you know what i mean they have the space they have the capacity and the facility to do it so they were able to take two um, but all of, yeah, all the mentees are, are really talented. Um, so as, a, as far as the mentorship, so, you know, we've made that connection from a mentor perspective, we've made that connection, they've got our numbers, we've got a little WhatsApp group, everyone's gonna keep in touch. Um, the, the, the artists from the first year of mentorship will then become peer mentors for year two. Um, it is completely down to, you know, working with the labels we have, we feel like we've given them the tools or at least a little bit of an eye opener in what they can do and how they can support moving forward. 
it's completely down to the label whether they want to keep in touch with the artist. Ram have already expressed that they want to continue um, supporting with some, you know, one-to-one -one lessons and stuff with one of our mentees, which I think is lovely. I think that's a lovely incentive. Um, but yeah, it's down to it's down to the the artist, uh, the label. Sorry, if they want to keep in touch with the artist. Um, but again, you know, just even just from take away the kind of production, you know, they've all grown in production skills anyway from when they first started, but like just the confidence, you know, just the confidence, it's a whole kind of bubble, you know, bubble of stuff that's sort of included with the mentorship and just the confidence of all of them actually since when they, they joined. Um, but we will be doing uh, season two, I guess. Yeah, see, uh, like, yeah, EP, uh, EP two, uh, mentorship two. Um, what we're going to do, we had a discussion about, do we keep the same labels? Um, what we've decided is like, as I mentioned earlier, we've given them the tools about, you know, I guess maybe like a slight expectation, if you like, uh, of what they can do. Um, but we're gonna get a whole new five and then we as EQ50 are just gonna take, <laughs> just take like a month or so off of doing anything because we're all absolutely fucking knackered. <laughs> Uh, I'm not gonna lie, yeah, it's been it's been a lot. It's 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 a lovely lot. Um, it is like having a second job, uh, and that's just the social media side of it. But yeah, it's like having a second job sometimes. And when you've got a job on top of that, gigs have just started opening. We're all artists in our own right. We just need like a month of not worrying about Zoom. <laughs> the the Zoom miles have racked up a lot in the last year. Um, yeah, just need a month off to chill, recompose ourselves, so we can get ready. Um, and it's been a learning curve for us as well. It's again, it's something brand new to us. It's something brand new to the scene. We know what we're gonna do differently this year. We know what we're gonna add. We know what we're not gonna bother with and things like that. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get a whole a whole new five, which is quite exciting. Yeah, and again, just yeah, delivering more skills um, from sort of consultations and just chats with with people in the scene. It just was a case of one being confidence. I mean, I know that for myself personally. Um, I think probably me as an artist in the last year or so has finally started to pick up. Um, my first EP, some of the tracks were like three years old, just sitting there in my hard drive, do you know what I mean? Because I just didn't have the confidence to, to get it out. So confidence is the, is the number one thing. Um, and just learning about, uh, just the learning, the production side of learning. So, you know, I'll take our RAM mentees, for example. One of them wanted to learn about sort of soundscape <laughs> and that kind of stuff, synthy stuff, whereas the other one needed drum processing. Do you know what I mean? So it's, again, it's individual to what they need. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to, I'm looking forward to season two. It's gonna be fun. Are there any other questions at all? <clears throat> yes. Not so much a question, but uh, yeah. um, we've had this conversation before, even in the past week, I've had two people um, speak to me about like the tokenistic side yeah. of booking you know, for women. Mm. It's just really interesting that people are open to talking about it. But we've had this conversation before, mm. haven't we? Where it's like there's going to be some level of tokenism, yeah. Whilst we're smoothing it all out, yeah, and, yeah. Like, it's just really interesting to see how that's going to move forward and yeah. open to that level of tokenism. Because yeah. some people do, you know, yeah. some people do get a whole lineup of put those women on because they do. Yeah. Um, and I've been booked before and they've got me on the lineup, but they put me on first, all that stuff. This is sort the thing, stuff. yeah. And it's like, yeah. that's something I really want to start working with. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, you know, unless you have literally been with, uh, who, who went to space recently? Richard Branson. Yeah, unless you've been with him on Mars, you have, you know, you can't not have heard or at least seen people talking about it. Do you know what I mean? It's been spoken about for at least the last four years if not been at the forefront for the last like two, definitely, I'd say. Um, it is still sad to see, I mean, there's one in Bristol over um, Halloween, I think I saw. Again, it's just all guys, do you know what I mean? I think at the, like, it's gonna be tokenistic until it becomes normal, do you know what I mean? And that's not in a disrespectful way. Um, till everyone is reading from the same book, it, it, some stuff is going to look tokenistic. I think at the bare minimum, the bare minimum, you know, if you're not booking one woman for your event, you're kind of actively 
in a way expressing your sexism or at least actively saying that you don't really care do you know what I mean I've had people say oh no but it's you know it's a label lineup you know it doesn't matter there's enough artists out there women queer non-binary do you know what I mean that play the whole spectrum you know what I mean it doesn't take five minutes to find you know find somebody but again like like you said Holly it's also you know inclusion on lineups it's a you know it's a lot more than just having a couple women there you know not having women be the first set do you know what I mean like that's also kind of not being inclusive do you know what I mean there's it's been lovely really nice to see the sort of new wave of newer female DJs coming through and stuff like that um but also it's about headliners as well do you know what I mean it's about not putting the women on last or putting the women on first or you know having a room <coughs> two putting all the women in a room two you know what I mean that's also not being inclusive and is a bit divisive as well um I feel like I feel like the chat with inclusion riders I think is a good is a good move big shouts to dynamics for finally sort of getting it out there and again as you know like I said about Andy C and Friction and Brian G saying we agree with this you know two of the biggest stars in drum and bass workforce who I've got to give a special shout out to because I think he very um delicately yeah he he the, the way he spoke it he he was like explaining it from his before perspective and his now perspective why he was also sort of battling people in the Instagram comments which I fully like appreciate and he was just very um he, he explained he was explaining things very very well very eloquently is that the right word eloquently put um but still you know I saw I you know saw some people you know, just bigging them up, like, oh my God, like Alex Pires and, and Workforce is so, you know, they, they didn't have to do that. Actually, no, yeah, they do. You know, they're the guys with 30K followers. Alex Pires has been phenomenally bad <laughs> of booking women for his lineups forever. Do you know what I mean? So now actually he does need to say this and he does need to put this in place. Again, it's, you know, it, this stuff, all this stuff that we talk about needs to be coming from the top to trickle down. It shouldn't, but it does. It shouldn't start from the bottom and fight its way up. Do you know what I mean? But, you know, things like this coming together today, a lot more people linking um, and working with people. Again, it's, you know, strength in numbers and slowly, you know, the sort of, you know, the kind of the ideal of it is spreading, which I think is, is important and it's needed. Um, <coughs> Yeah. What do you think like promoters can do then to like, make sure that they are being more diverse? Like, can you recommend like things maybe pre-event that they can do to make sure that they're being diverse yeah. as well as on the night? Yeah, I think well, I think you know if you're if you're running a night, you're going to have some residents. Like just make sure everyone's there in, you know, as as residents and stuff. Um Again, like I'll go back to what I was saying about EQ50 and our team, you know, labels and your management have everybody there do you know what I mean and it's sort of everyone is represented everyone gets a chance um you know there's great they obviously dynamics is a great a great way if you don't if you don't know any you know any women or non-binary people there's a whole directory of people and you know it's not that difficult just a bit of research you know like just a little bit of research there's EQ50, there's Black Junglist Alliance, there's Dynamics, like there's loads of crews out there at the moment that can help you just ask, do you know what I mean? And I think that's where maybe people are a little bit hesitant, maybe they're a bit embarrassed to ask, they're a little bit scared to ask, which is okay, but you know, obviously, you know, there is also sort of nothing wrong with asking as well. Um, I think also as well, like, you know, with the whole, there's been such a push for, for women, such a push for women. Um, and then most recently, you know, such a, a push for color of lineups, but there's a whole, you know, family and crew that are kind of being forgotten about. And that's the queer community, um, you know, queer representation on lineups, I feel like is going to be the next one to be spoken about. Um, or at least pushed for. And actually, you know, we, if we're talking about inclusivity and diversity, you know, one of the biggest um, marginalized people and also one of the biggest community in numbers um, needs to be represented as well. Um, but, 
you know, the queer crew as they do, they're like, all right, fuck you, we're fine. And they create their own stuff. And there's actually, you know, I'm not talking just about unorthodox and queer rave doing their own thing, but actually a lot of the keep hush nights and things like that, all the crew involved with that, they're all, you know, they're all queer, they're all proud and they're all doing their thing. So yeah, whilst there's been a huge push for women, um, there also needs to be sort of a push for, you know, everyone gender wise, sexuality wise as well which is interesting because drum and bass that's a whole nother conversation we won't get on that now <laughs> but you know looking at drum and bass if you look at where it started it was black and it was queer and then sort of just you know just look where it it's the thing with it's the thing with as things grow as things get out to a wider audience as things grow worldwide it's it's what happens but i think we need to ask why it happens or at least you know, not forget the roots, do you know what I mean? Not forget the roots. Um, any other questions just while I'm, yes? I've just got a question about what you're saying about uh, queer people on lineups in the community and stuff. Yeah. So I might be being really naive in saying this, so I yeah, apologize. Yeah. No, 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 fine. Um, how would you know? Like, would you mm. really isolate someone based on I understand being what you're saying. Like, how do you even know that unless you're really homophobic and have gone out and gone, Hang on a minute. Yeah. You can't be yeah, yeah. There's so there's um this great thing called the non-binary database, which is um there's a few of the there's also a black music database as well, which again is just a huge Excel spreadsheet of um non-binary people or black people. Um so you can go through there. Instagram has this great feature now um where you can put pronouns most gay people uh, or queer sorry, qu most queer people will have their pronouns in their Instagram. So it will say she, her, they, them, for example. So that is probably one of the most telling things as well. Um, and also just, yeah, just, I guess, just seeing the community that they, you know, that they, they hang out with. I guess you do take things on face value a little bit, but there are also things that, that you can do to, yeah, to sort of find those people. But yeah, oh yeah, I get you what you're saying. Did you want to ask a question? Yeah, I was going to say, it kind of follows on from that. Yeah. Because, um, I'm working with a label um, to release, and I've now started getting involved in the a and Cool. And we've had this conversation about diversity. Yeah. Because our uh, label, for want of a better word, is very sausage heavy. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, it's a very tight family. Yeah. Um, and I've been, i found them incredibly inclusive with me, because on yeah. the basis that they all look like, Rude Boys, you know, they're very MC heavy as a lineup and right. all of that. So for me, as a Cornish lad, getting involved with them, <laughs> like, you know, who are these guys? And yeah. Did a trip to Amsterdam with them, and wow, like amazing. Yeah. But we've had this conversation, and um, you know, now I'm doing the A and R with them and stuff. It was like, well, yeah, what can we do to get more girls on board? And yeah, you know, we saw the kickback with Hospital. Yeah. Um, where they wanted, they literally just put it out there. Was yeah. like, we want to sign a black artist. Yeah. And then someone applied and, you know, there was the whole memes of like different shades yeah. of black, you know, yeah. and that kicked back. Yeah. You know, so like you're, you're saying it's okay to ask, but on the other hand, it's kind of, you see what happened with hospital. Yeah. So we're kind of in that nervous like, position. And also the label owner actually said to me, he was like, you know what, in the 10 years of him running the label, mm. he's not knowingly, and again, this fits in with the last question, yeah. you know, there's, I know two DJs called Indica. We all know one of them, and yeah. the other guy's a guy from Cornwall, so we've got yeah. a male and a female. Who knows what sex, gender, yeah. whatever they are. Don't get me on DJs having the same names. We'll yeah, save yeah, that yeah. for them. We'll <laughs> save that for them. Get me back and we'll talk about oh, that. Yeah, yeah, sorry, go on. <laughs> the thing is, like, at the end of the day, when someone submits a track, yeah, yeah. Like, the, we've actually got a submissions page on our website. Which right. actually negates everything. Yeah. All you get is a Dropbox link. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's literally the name of the artist, the name of the track. We listen to the track. If we like it, we'll then contact it. Okay. So, so what you could do, so what you could do is, I think, so I think where hospital went wrong, I think that yes, they were completely right to do, like, to put up a mentorship. I think they went about it the maybe the wrong way. Um, the thing with inclusion and diversity is you don't need to shout about it. You you just need to do it. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, so when you're saying that you want, um, you know, more people sending tracks to you, just say we're looking from, we're looking, put up a post, whatever label, blah, blah, label is now accepting demos. Um, and then you look for maybe change your, um, so you've got a submissions page, yeah? So 
add one of so whereas it's just a dropbox link add another box that says link to socials and then you can just peep if you like the track or if you're you know you can just peep the socials or get them to write their name so name socials link or something like that just add a little box you know what i mean so it you know it's not again yeah it doesn't need to be this whole you know big show and dance look we've got a gay person a gay you know what i mean like, oh my god he's black you know what i mean like it doesn't you know there's boobs there jesus um you know what i mean like it doesn't it doesn't need to be a big show you don't need to be showing off that you're doing it people are watching do you know what i mean people are now seeing when you're not doing it you know um you just need to be doing it that's that's the thing but yeah just you know just put up a put up a post again if anyone's looking for maybe if you're a crew if you're wanting demos or you're a radio station or something like that you know we are now accepting demos from everyone women will see that everyone and they'll you know it's like a sixth sense they'll cotton, cotton onto it do you know what i mean we are now accepting demos from everyone and that's your and then when you get your demos in add a little extra put your name maybe where they're from just to you know thicken it out a little bit socials and then um and then you can gauge you know who and then that's what you do you get your demos and then you actively look for the people that you're trying to promote uh, without making a big song and dance about it. Um, so I was wondering if there was, because um, I, I, I kind of agree and disagree with that, because I actually like, I like the fact that yeah. when I'm checking demos out, yeah, I, I, I actually just like the fact that I literally, there's no face on it. Yeah, definitely. Which, you know, and, and that for me, the music is always first. And it always will be, and, and, it and always will be, that, yeah. You know, like, uh, it makes no dip. I mean, obviously we're actively looking for yeah. people that are, to make the label more diverse. Yeah, yeah. But I think that I actually like that as the first gateway. That 100%. There, you know, there is no gatekeeper. Yeah, yeah. Literally, your tune speaks for itself. For real, and yeah. And then if we find out it's a lady or whatever, like, yeah. we'll be like, oh, brilliant, great. Yeah. Um, but I was, what I was going to come to is that, you know, you mentioned like EQ50 is a closed group. So obviously, yeah. like, I can't join that. Yeah. But like, is there a way that perhaps EQ50 could, you know, help funnel mm. something like the label I work for doing yeah. the A&R that maybe we could contact you at EQ50 and say, look, yeah. you know, we've never received knowingly a demo from mm -hmm. a female producer. Yeah, yeah. We would like to encourage that. Yeah. And we don't want to be virtue signaling or accused of virtue signaling or have a potential fuck up like um, yeah, yeah. hospital. Yeah. But is there a way that maybe we could um, infiltrate your group yeah. without it being... A big song and dance, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, maybe say to you, yeah. Can you put a post in EQ50? That's exactly so what I was about to say. Have actually contacted us. Mm -hmm. They're actively looking for it. Yeah. I think that's the thing. Like, you know, we're a much smaller label, but I think you know, it did a lot of damage for hospitals. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, and some of my favourite artists, like Blade Runner and, and Injure, were on the label, and like they're wicked. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, it did a lot of damage to them. I think for a small label, we don't have like mm. people advising us or anything. Yeah. It's just like you know, we don't we don't want to. We feel like we're walking on eggshells yeah sense, so. i think and i think that that feeling is from what you know i was chatting to codebreaker a little while ago um i put a post out basically on about how people can maybe approach women for demos or i've had a few people get at me for wanting more women on their um their radio and about how to do that and how to do it delicate what not to say and what to say um and like similar to what you were saying he was saying that yeah like the eggshells thing not knowing how to go about it um but just going back to what you said so you know, you said that you, um, you know, you just take, you like the sort of face value thing. Um, you know, you like not knowing who it is, uh, which is brilliant, but I do feel like we all have a duty to, you know, to open up. Um, and I also think that, you know, what people sort of get a little bit twisted and not quite understand with the whole thing is that, you know, as a label, you're not gonna release shit music or you're not gonna book a DJ that clangs their way through an hour. Do you know what I mean? It's not about just chucking anyone up. Do you know what I mean? It's about there's shit loads of talented people that haven't had a look in for so long. Do you know what I mean? There's talented women out there. Again, I'll go back to our mental shit. We were blown away, you know what I mean? Just picking five was really difficult. We could have quite easily probably picked about 10. Like the standard was seriously up here. Like it was really, really good. And just more and more people are coming through. Um, so yeah, it's not just chucking anyone up. It's there are some, you know, talented people. A label isn't gonna release shit music. Um, 
And the last thing he said, yes, yes, you can. Yeah. So if you let's get details after this. Yeah. And we'll, we'll link up on, on the socials and same for anybody. If you're a knight or if you're thinking about doing a label, um, you know, I can put, like I said, we've got our platform, we've got our group. I can say, right. I'm just going to call you blah, blah label for now. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, you know, and I'll, I'll put that, we do that quite regularly. We did that recently with another blah, blah label that we, I was openly looking for demos. And there was also blah, blah radio that wanted some more. <laughs> um, but yeah, and there was blah, blah radio. So yeah, well, let's get details. And then if you do me like, you can do me like a flyer or just text yeah send demos too i think also the other thing to think about as well which is something just to bear in mind is you know now that people are openly looking for diversity and inclu inclusivity women producing and all the rest of it they're not just going to fall out the sky that's the important thing to remember it's it's amazing that yes people are now actively looking but if you don't get any back like that's nothing on you just keep working at it you know what i mean you, if, as long as you're i think there's more of you know got more respect and there's more pride in people that are trying do you know what i mean if you don't get a woman to release on your blah blah label in the next year it don't matter but you're actively looking for her which i respect and i fully commend do you know what i mean um you know just when you do your blah blah events get some you know make it up there that this is the thing with events of like labels are going to take a little bit longer it's you know there there are female producers out there there's more coming but in the ratio compared to men yes there's less but they there they are there um there's shit loads of female djs do you know what i mean and the events is what you can see again taking in stuff in our eyes we are visual the first thing i do when i look at a lineup is i go how many women are there the second thing i do is i go how many black people are there and what I should be doing is how many queer people are there? Do you know what I mean? So that's when you get into the habit of doing that subconsciously, it's been brain, you know, brainwashed by this lot, just doing it subconsciously, you actually realize how bad it can, not how bad it is, you know, but how, you know, how bad or how much further there is to go basically, or how much more work there needs to be done. Um, but I have full respect for people trying and that's, you know, that's the least you could ask for people talking, people trying. Um, but yeah, events, events are open, flyers are open, events are out there, they're visual. If you can't, if you don't have a female on, you know, producer, get some female DJs on your events. That's where you can make so it up. You're already in, in that position. Perfect, and perfect. You before you see nights being put on that are run by a label and all of our artists are, yeah. the, are dudes. So, mm. you know, it's, uh, but yeah, we are booking female DJs. Yeah, um, yeah, which is, and that's um, great. But invariably, they often are on the first set, which is something yeah. you mentioned earlier on, and I was kind of sat there thinking, well, yeah, but then having said that, you know, my, my way into DJing 10, mm. 15 years ago was contacting promoters and saying, oh, yeah. you warm up your night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Particularly Cornwall, everyone just played jump up. Yeah. Like, you know what, like, I can actually warm up. And, yeah. you know, I got picked up by much bigger promoters really quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could warm up as well. Oh, that's another talk. I'll come back and do oh, another yeah. talk about the warm up DJ. I did a huge yeah. post about it. <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah. Yeah. And again, and again, this is the, see, that's the thing as well. You don't want to be, you know, wiling out to, you know, an Andy C set to three people. Do you know what I mean? Um, but th this is the other thing as well. Obviously, it's that balance with, you know, yes, you're not going to put somebody that's brand new on at prime time and stuff like that. I'm talking about sort of, you know, more established artists, DJs and stuff that are out there that are still sort of getting put on last, the, you know, the set second from last and all the rest of it. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, keep going. And programming as well. Like, that's mm. something that gets on my nerve about nights is programming. Like, yeah. People just get the DJ on because of their packing order rather than what they yeah. actually stylistically play. And that's where I feel like the sort of the art of a promoter, do you know what I mean, has been lost a little bit because promoters should know where to put DJs to make their night go, do you know what I mean, rather than, like you said, it just being like smash, smash, oh, headliner, yeah, up here, okay. You know what I mean? It, but again, it's that, that's a sort of a wider problem with the music industry 
wider problem with you know drum and bass and the music scene as well um what's the time oh that's it oh. <laughs> um are there any other questions obviously if like if you want to chat to me outside of this or you have any other follow-up questions at sweet pd and b is all my socials on my website or eq50 eq50 d and b yeah if you want to like have a chat or send send stuff our messages are always open and yeah feel free to you know and there's great dynamics are absolutely amazing and yeah there's some really really good like organizations out there to help as well um Sorry, I went a little bit inclusive rather than navigating the industry. Apologies. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, yeah, okay, cool. And don't rush, take your time as well. Longevity. Longevity is something that's really important. Like like if said, a few people that are, you know, going viral, getting really big. Do you know what I mean? I'm in my 10th year and I'm just getting somewhere. My prime example, of the person that I use to describe this is Serum. Serum has been around for like 20 years. Serum used to make jungle, do you know what I mean? Back five, six years ago before Souped Up, well, when Souped Up started, people hated Wobblers, they didn't like it. But he stuck to his guns and he's built and he's created with Souped Up and now look at it, it's one of the most sought after labels. Wobblers is probably like a modern day jump up even I'd say like a lot, you know, well jump up for what was for me back in the day, do you know what I mean? Um, so, you know, where, where do you just slow down, trust the process, like just keep building and, you know, numbers and everything's just going to always get higher. Um, and those that do sort of break through really young or whatever, like they're anomalies. That's one person in a group of 10,000 that are trying to break through the industry because it's, you know, it's a very saturated industry these days, music in general. Um, something to think about most of the people that do break through they're doing stuff completely different to what everyone else is doing that's yeah that'll be my last thought thanks <laughs>